Thanks for tuning in to the Big Nose Podcast, a platform for me to nose into other people's business. On this podcast, I strive to share with you stories from a range of different people over various different topics. So before my nose starts twitching any further, let's get down to business. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Big Nose Podcast. I am delighted this week to be joined by Kevin. Kevin is of also known as the Wild Atlantic Traveller. It's great to have you on the show this week, Kevin. Thanks very much, Chris. I'm delighted to be, uh, be here with you. Well, well, virtually. Well, virtually, as, as is the world at the moment. But um, the Wild Atlantic Traveller. Who is the Wild Atlantic Traveller? What what makes what makes uh, Kevin the Wild Atlantic Traveller? I'm interested to know. Well, it kind of started with a, you know from an early kind of age, Piers, because we used to go out as kids. You know, we went everywhere with mum and dad to the beach. You know, to the woods. You know, hike. I've had a keen interest in photography from that early age. You know, because we always carried a camera with us. So um, that's kind of where it stemmed from. And then as I got a little older, then it progressed then into kind of falling back in love with my country and back in love with my, my country, really. Yeah. And it kind of developed more, you know, from the first lockdown. You know, that's where I kind of got the gist of it to say, like, oh, hang on a sec, you know, I've really got to grips here. And I just love getting outside. It's very rare that I'm stuck inside. But I planned just before the lockdown to travel the wet Atlantic way and take our passport with us and stamp it as many stops as we could but then unfortunately the lockdown hit and our plans were kind of put on halt really so what kind of happened was we got to know our kind of five well our two kilometer distance first and then we went on into the 20s and then we got to know the county a wee bit better so I'm kind of hoping this year we're going to travel further and experience the full wet Atlantic way so that's 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 uh, that's where the 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 wide Atlantic comes into it. So obviously, as you're going about, and you're based up in, in Donegal, and obviously, that's where the idea came about. Then obviously, with you know, obviously the invention a few years back of the wild Atlantic way, it kind of comes okay. into with your passion from obviously a young age going into then traveling further on down. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it, pretty much. I was just wondering, in terms of you're generating a lot of content. I have my iPhone and I take a few photographs and I think I'm wonderful, but the stuff that you're producing is like beyond phenomenal. Like, but how do you generate so much content? How do you know where to go, when to go, or or, or how to kind of what's going to look good at the end of the day? Well, I kind of make it up as I go along. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but uh, the first thing I do when I get up is I, I look outside. I don't check the time. The first thing I do is check the weather, and if it looks half decent, I'm out and. You know, depending on how nice of a day, if it's going to be very warm, very sunny, I tend to go for the beaches, you know, because I like to sit back and listen to the waves. And then if it's a wee bit of a dull kind of day, I go for the hills and I go and search for something like the waterfalls or lakes or anything like that. And the only thing I take with me up to recently is my phone, which is uh, an Hawaii P30 Pro. I used to take a big Nikon with me, but it just got too clumsy. But my phone comes everywhere it's got a great spec of a camera great optical zoom on it um and then just recently i purchased a wee drone which now i've got to grips with and i'm eager to take it out but yeah basically just the phone yeah i think there's been a lot of um a lot of accounts similar to yourself in terms of setting up um over the last maybe year maybe 18 months in terms of creating platforms on which to share photographs um so is it just the is it just the, the camera you use or what type of other equipment? As you said, you, you have you have the you have the drone, which I think we all we all want. We all want. Um, but <laughs> well, I wanted a drone for a long time, and then with COVID and that, and not working, I managed to save up and put it aside. But um, yeah, just basically my camera phone and my drone now. But all my photographs that you see in my content pool of uh, Instagram is strictly straight from the phone. And um, like I'm not into enhancing or over enhancing the photographs. Uh, I tend to use a program on my phone called Lightroom. Uh, yeah. A lot of people will be familiar with it, and it just makes slight enhancements. You know where I might lower or increase the saturation and same the contrast, but that's the highlight of it, really. Not too I think the not, actual natural landscape. Yeah, not the best. not too technical, and, and and leaving it as pure as possible. I suppose is is the approach, and and with the Wild Atlantic Way. 
the it I've been up and down it um different parts of it thankfully over the years and, and it is a, a, a be some beautiful spots all along the way regardless of the weather but to you I suppose as a person who's living you know on the west coast up in Donegal what is so new, unique about the wild, wild Atlantic Way? Well, there's quite a few different things. I think the biggest thing that they introduced was the Wild Atlantic Way passport, which kind of gives everybody that unique opportunity to stamp their journey along the way and have a you know a memory of it. You know, rather than just from your mind, you can actually have a stamp collection. Uh, but I think the, the biggest thing here for Donegal is that the coastline is so rugged, and no matter what time of the day you go, whether it's sunrise, sunset, or during the daytime. It's so impressive, you know, the kind of sea breeze beating against your face and there's so many kind of unique quirkiness to it, like, you know, there's little coves, inlets, um, you'll have sea stacks, sea arches, you know, there's such an array of uh, sights to see and it don't even we're blessed, you know, it's absolutely beautiful and I can only imagine what the rest of the Wild Atlantic Way is going to be when we hope to venture next year. Yeah, I think uh, also another thing about the Atlantic Way is you can get depending on where you are, different experiences depending on the time of the day or the weather conditions you get there at, the, at that time. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, uh, you can go from a nice sunny morning and then it could, you know, slowly come into a, a, a bit of a stormy day where the rain will start beating down. But that will give you such a unique edge on your photographs because of the sky and the landscape, you know, the two contrasting against each other can really impact it. And I think that's where the kind of natural elements of the photographs come through. We don't need to over enhance, and you just take it exactly how you see it. And I think that's where my kind of edge comes from a wee bit. Uh, it's all within what you see rather than superimposing it and making it look superficial. But did yeah. it really get taken by this camera, or was it photoshopped? Yeah, well, that's that's one thing that 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 it, that has become prevalent. All the different gizmos and and uh, techniques you can use in terms of getting different exposures as you say but one thing you did say was that you know obviously in up in your end there's quite a rugged coastline and when we were up there myself and Eve and um, we were up in Muck Ross is actually funnily enough I came across you inadvertently <laughs> and I was like Neve, that's that I'm nearly sure I recognize that guy um but you had we had watched you and you were walking out and you were like that guy's gone all the way out underneath the rocks and I was like there must be some really hard to reach places that you've come across and I'm sure there's been moments where you've gone to yourself, this is way too far and I've gone too, it's gone too dangerous for me or, or is it a case of that's half the, the thrill sometimes of trying to get that image? Yeah, you know, I've been at both really, you know, I've got a problem where I push myself, you know, I'm that nosy that I have to go further and if somebody says you can't get further, I will find a way further and you know, we had one of them experiences there just before the lockdown. There's a secret waterfall just before Mokros. Uh, well, it was one of the best kept secrets, but it's the worst now. <laughs> and the tide was coming in, and I thought, oh, I can beat the tide. I can outrun the tide. And I got halfway there to it, because you actually have to get into the water a wee bit in certain parts. Wow. And it started getting waist height, and I thought, I have to turn back. And I thought, no, keep going. And I got to the point then when I just had to give up. But otherwise, you know, most of the times, you know, nine out of ten, I would actually push my way and I'd get there. But it can be very really dangerous, so you need to kind of know what you're doing. Uh, and sometimes I don't. I just chance it. And nine out of ten, I'm, I'm lucky when I chance it. I get the perfect, you know, spot. But you always have to have that side of caution too. Yeah, it's, it's about risk-reward, I suppose. And and did you uh, go back and get that picture after afterwards? Yeah. So, yeah, I actually went back then. So I went back the next day. And, it, again, you've got to be very careful, too, of title signs. You know, I always say this to anybody that messages me how to get to places. I always say, just be careful of the tides. You know, if it's coming in, don't chance it. You know, even if you think you're quick like me, you're going to be beaten. You know, that tide can come in so quickly that a couple of blinks and it's at your ankles. But uh, just to be careful. You know, it's anything can be dangerous. You could be climbing up a hill and slide, anything. So it, I always recommend travel with somebody. Most of the times I travel on the one, and other times, you know, I, I travel with somebody with me just in case, you know, if anything yeah, happens. Yeah. Uh, but I always like to push myself to that part, you know, that further boundary. Well, this is it. And I, and I, and I suppose, as you said, like growing up, you were out in the outdoors and 
you would have obviously learned off your folks maybe when's the right time to go and when's the wrong time to go um but with experience it's where where, where it, it's important to come in and you know, obviously with your folks um, and growing up you've been exposed to knowing when to go or where not to go depending on the conditions but say you're sitting here this evening and you're looking at the forecast for tomorrow how do you decide where to go and when to go well again it just depends so like you know the good days I tend to go for the coastline and then the kind of bad days then I kind of go for the hillsides go to the woods and stuff like that but it just kind of depends weather wise so like tomorrow's looking kind of decent and if we were allowed to go out I would probably head for maybe Fanid or head maybe further down south and do the Kilcar, Mokros uh, Slave Lake uh, and I like to park up and get on foot and yeah. when you see me at Mokros you know I really like to get down and yeah. really get close to the water's edge uh, most of the times I get battered by the sea but uh, you know it's only water at the end of the day and as long as I'm being careful it, you know it's it's safe but yeah it just kind of depends weather wise uh, I'm always always keen to get anywhere but I could end up at the beach and then further throughout the day then I could end up up a mountain yeah it just depends you know uh, where the day takes me really so yeah. I kind of just get myself lost I make it up really well this is it that's all part of being the wild Atlantic traveller you know the road isn't necessarily set in stone for you um, as we've yeah. touched on, um, with the advancements in personal handheld technology and the emergence of more online platforms, particularly with, you know, we had Pinterest and now you have Instagram, do you find it challenging to stand out from the crowd when trying to generate content? Yeah, it is It is very challenging because everybody's trying to do it. Everybody's trying to have an edge out there in a say, and with that comes, you know, a saturation with it as well because there's so many people taking kind of doing what you're doing and you're doing what they're doing so it is hard but uh, I would say just be yourself you know have your own edge have your own cuts and you know sometimes you might mimic somebody else's work but it just, it just depends on how you put that spin on it you know you might have somebody taking the same picture as you but it just depends on the angle that you're looking at it yeah they could be taking a full front or you could be at a side angle and just be yourself really you know and um it's, it's how you capture your audience, how you talk to them and interact. And I think because, you know, the Instagram followers that I've gained so far, which is quite minimal to most people out there, but uh, is engaging with them when they contact you, you know, respond back and try and give them something positive. And anybody that asks for advice, I give it to them. Yeah. You know, because I've done the journey, so it's always good to pass that second information on. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where my kind of re-edge kind of stands out. Because sometimes you find it hard that not many people want to give you the advice where to go because they don't want you to ruin it for anybody else and plus they don't want it to become a tourist attraction. Yeah. And but knowledge, I think within moderation. Yeah, knowledge is power as well. Sometimes you don't want to be sharing yeah. trade secrets as, as they call it. And just talking about, you know, taking photographs and everybody taking photographs, what maybe differentiates you between maybe other people taking photographs in that area is you knowing the ingredients that go into a good photograph. For you, what makes a good photograph? For me, it all depends on what's what I'm taking of. Like, you know, if it's a scene that I like a bit of dramaticness, you know, and again this is with the cloud, the clash and skies come in. So like I said, the sun could be shining and then all of a sudden then you might get an overcast of cloud coming. And just that uniqueness, you know, the two, you know, amalgamate together and again the sunrise and sunset's always a good time. Because I just think the visualization of the different colors, you know, in the sky. So again, you know, it could be just me playing around with a bit of contrast, saturation, and just you know, light enhancement uh, would kind of make me stand out a wee bit. Yeah. But again, I think when you look at it, everybody's quite similar, uh, and it's just capturing that unique shot that's really going to stand out there. But I suppose when you're when you when you're going to these um, places and. You know, when, when we were out of COVID and there was lots of tourists in these areas, or maybe there were domestic tourists when we were allowed to go around the country, you might be looking at somebody with the biggest amount of equipment and um, taking a photograph and not probably sure how to use it, but whereas you are in a position where you've been taking them for so long that you know what to do, is not really the case. That's it. I would say that you, know, you don't need the most expensive camera. I started off with a really expensive camera, and you know what? It turned out to be a nuisance when I were carrying it. And as technology's moved and developed, things are getting smaller, compact, and to keep up with them rolling times, it's going to be very expensive. 
it was only a couple of years ago that, that this phone came out and I was Apple all the way up to it, carrying my Nikon and then up to the Hawaii coming out with the P30 Pro. I couldn't believe it. I thought this is this is new science. This like it's got the Nikon qualities but in a phone. Yeah. And it's been fantastic. And touch wood, I've had no problem with it and I take it everywhere. It slips into the pocket and off I go. Well, that's that's, um, a, that's a really positive. Uh, on, that's a really positive endorsement for that that phone in particular. I was thinking obviously before we were chatting, you know, some questions. And I think I was talking to Neve, and Neve said this is probably the cru- uh, the cruelest question I can ask you. But if you were to pick one location based to shoot over and over again, where would it be and why? I think I was kind of toying with this and kind of looking back. And when I look through my Instagram feed. You can see clearly one dominant area, which would be found at Lighthouse. Yeah. And I think for me, it's such an iconic feature here in Donegal, and it's like a beacon that everybody, you'll see it, the everyday tourist that comes to Donegal heads for Fan at Lighthouse. Yeah. And I currently work in hospitality, and the first thing we get asked is, can you get inside the Lighthouse? And for me, you know, you can go on a good day, a bad day, a storm, you know, you'll always get a different angle of the lighthouse no matter what way the light's on it it's so unique and what you find there is puddles of water you can get the reflection from the lighthouse on the water the sky the dramatic waves beating against the cliff and the rock edges and we actually stayed last year so we did for three nights which was a unique experience because we've seen it from sunrise to sunset we've seen a cloudy day to a beautiful day and we've seen it you know, a bit of a, not a stormy day, but a showery day where yeah. it rained, uh, but again, brightened up so quickly. And uh, I think for me, yeah, Fan of Lighthouse, I like a lot of areas, but for me, I think it, it seems to be from my content that Fan of Lighthouse is for me. Yeah. Um, it's a place. You know, so much up there. It's a place we were up there during uh, during earlier in la- late last year. Sorry, before we all were locked down again, and and we hadn't got as far as Fanad Lighthouse, and it gives us a reason to go back to Donegal, which we didn't really need. But you know, it, it's definitely something we we look forward to going back to once we can. I was reading through your Instagram profile, and you're self described as you love to wander, and um, and obviously with restrictions going on under COVID nineteen. This has impacted you somewhat. What has been the impact on you and your ability to get around? I think there's kind of a, a positive and a negative. The kind of positive for me was I got to know, you know, within my five k's of my front door. And we live kind of near enough on the River Swilly. And, you know, for me, I've never kind of ventured down there because it's kind of one of them things I've taken for granted because we live beside it. Yeah. You know, we see it every day. That, you know, I didn't think I need to explore it, but since COVID, I think I've trampled on every piece of grass down there uh, and flattened it and made a pathway for people. Um, so that's the kind of positive side. I've got to know the area a wee bit better and I've discovered wee things, nooks and crannies. And then the kind of negative side is, I think it's the mental health side, you know, because I think it can be so challenging. And we have a family here, I have two young kids. And I think that side being cooped up, you know, with a small space to work with, it's very hard because you want to get out and my thing for wandering is I put my earphones in and off I go I could walk for miles and then suddenly realise I'm three hours away from my car and it never bothers me yes. whereas here um, five kilometres is nothing to what I would walk when I'm hiking or if I'm strolling from beach to beach yeah I know. so yeah yeah there's also a danger that you could start to resent everything that lies within your five kilometres <laughs> <laughs> after a period of time yeah <laughs> I think that's slowly happening but uh, it's it's hard not to yeah you know, no, but then we'll grow to love it again absolutely as you said as you said sometimes you take for granted what's in your actual locality and, and we're we're blessed here we, we're in an apartment block but we're attached to a massive park that is wooded and it's lovely um, so we've gotten to know that area as well um, something we touched on earlier in the conversation was you know photoshopping and you know filters and everything else that goes along with that and once all i wanted to know about the fact and you've alluded to it a little bit um, but maybe you'll go into more detail you know the end result of the photographs that you take are they edited to a large or small degree or would you rather less editing now on these platforms that we use or would you be you know taking is there advantages of the editing material that's there yeah well i think less editing 
you know, you want it to be true to what you see. You know, why distort something that's so beautiful to make it look superficial? And there's so many sites now that I see, so many pages out there that would superimpose the moon or the Milky Way. And I'm thinking, you know, I've been out in them times and it's, it's so hard to see a Milky Way and especially to them details. And they do look great, but I think, you know, you're taken away from the fact is what you're looking at is so beautiful, so unique to that area. You don't need to, you know. And sometimes it probably gives people a boost, you know, to show off their skills, which they are incredible skills to edit and Photoshop it, you know, certain items into a bit, uh, photograph. But for me, minimal kind of editing, you know, your saturations, your contrast, you know, depending on your grain, light scales, you know, I don't think you need too much. Personally, that's for me, yeah. you know, and I think that's why Keep some it. people would probably argue and say you could enhance mine a wee bit more. But I think I'm, I think I'm maxed yeah. to what I am. You some of them aren't enhanced yeah. at all. Some of them are natural. Yeah. Well, keeping it real is important, I suppose, to when, to what you're doing and. I was thinking about as well if there was people out there listening in, you know, and they they have the phone or a, a camera there that's been sitting there for a while, or maybe they're you know in a position where they've saved up some money and they want to invest in, you know, photography. Any budding photographers out there, what advice would you give to them starting off? Well, for me, I would say it's all about having fun. You know, you don't need the most expensive equipment, and even if it's just a phone to get you started, get the phone, get it out. Always make sure your lens is clean because what you find is most people touch the camera lens with their fingers on their phone and it becomes cloudy and they're scratching their head thinking, why is it so cloudy? <laughs> but uh, yeah, just have fun. You know, you don't need, you know, you don't need um, top cameras or anything like that. But if you do and you have the ability to get them, yeah, definitely take it out. And, you know, start, start around the garden, start, you know, a wee bit further afield and kind of build your confidence. Yeah. Um, play around with Lightroom's a great app and it's free it's free on your phone and it's a great way to play with it you know they have an auto tool on it that if you're unsure about how to operate uh, there's YouTube tutorials that will kind of help you guide you on the elements on how to enhance a photograph or photo edit it um, so yeah and just have fun you know don't be frightened to go that bit further and don't be shy you know it's all about having fun I could go out and take about 300 photographs in an hour and only use three of them and then delete the rest. Yeah. But it sounds crazy, 300, but I take so many angles that I need to make sure I've got the right angle that I think is going to set up my platform. Yeah. Uh, and that's basically it, really. That's Have really, fun and yeah. enjoy it. That's really sound advice. I suppose for closing off this chat we're going to have, what I would consider is, you know, COVID's going to be gone, please God soon where is the most interesting or where is the place you're most hopeful to get to once we're out of lockdown and being able to get down that wild atlantic way well definitely i want to hit galway Kerry, and i want to hit uh, cork because they were on our bucket list at the very start just before lockdown and that's what we had planned and we bought a passport to take it with us and stamp it so i think so what we're aiming as a family for next year is to complete the passport take a couple of weeks off and just go as a family and enjoy it because seeing so many pictures of people locally posting from all these different parts of the Wild Magic Way has really boosted us to do it and do the full thing and not do it as what we planned where we do a couple and see how far we got. Yeah. We're going to do the whole thing. So yeah, I think that's that's the goal. That sounds, I, the full lot. that sounds ideal to me and you never know, you might spot us down there ourselves along the Wild Atlantic Way because it's looking like that's where our honeymoon will be. Um, along the Wild Atlantic Way somewhere maybe in a, a camper van if you can figure one out but Kevin the Wild Atlantic Traveller it's been great to have you on this episode of the Big Nose Podcast I wish you all the best and I look forward to all the photographs that you're going to take along the Wild Atlantic Way and, and be sure to share those stamps that you get on that passport it's really exciting thank you so much Pierce it's been a pleasure and thank you so much for having me